Okay, thanks uh, for having me here. So I'm an animal scientist, so you're going to get a little bit more of a, an animal perspective on some of the stuff. I think I had a graduate student working on this study, sort of a, a full lifetime, uh, I guess, research project from birth till death of, of uh, uh, dairy animals and... Um, Kind of, I have to give you a little bit of background on uh, some more animal perspective, uh, and then we'll get into the consumer stuff uh, towards the end. Of course, uh, to brag maybe a little bit, uh, so uh, we have an organic dairy uh, in western Minnesota. Uh, it's the only research uh, organic dairy um, in the upper Midwest here. There's only a few uh, in the country, so we, we have one in, in uh, Minnesota. This is sort of our, our herds that we have. You can see organic milk price is quite high right now. Conventional milk price is about half of, uh, of that. And um, we kind of go from there. So we're, we're very pleased. So we can do a lot of research studies on uh, animal and dairy production systems um, with, um, uh, with our herd. And uh, we focus on a lot of different aspects. So I'm more of a systems person. So I focus on from the production end to uh, economics and, and consumers. Um, and we have about 700 acres of certified organic land at our university uh, to do that kind of stuff. And um, I guess I'm all in charge of it, which is kind of nice. So really, I, I had a graduate student. Um, uh, she was from California, come up to Minnesota, brave the nice uh, 30 below zero wind chills uh, every now and then. Uh, to look at, really, she was interested in, in sort of beef production systems, dairy beef production system, and how that related to, to consumers in the end. So really, we were, you know, we kind of did this study when there was a, a pretty good increase in demand for organic uh, livestock, and there's actually still a great demand for it. Actually, we there's more demand than there is uh, products available right now, especially for milk and beef products. Um, it, it's very hard to find. So really we're kind of looking at, you know, bull calves from organic dairy producers and can a producer make more money by uh, raising those organically versus going into the conventional market. Most bull calves from organic dairy farms, uh, organic beef farms tend to go into the conventional market, which is actually quite a, a travesty, I think. So we're, we're sacrificing a lot of organic beef uh, to go into the conventional world. So we wanted to look at, we looked at growth, uh, we looked at the profitability, uh, we looked at meat quality, so we actually went to the um, uh, beef plant, to the slaughter plant afterwards, co collected a lot of data on these uh, animals, and then we actually run some consumer taste panels uh, at Minnesota to to look at, you know, how did people perceive these, this this beef. <coughs> so a little bit about it. Um, so we we did this study a, a couple years ago. Uh, it just takes a long time to do animal studies um, to, to generate that sort of data unlike uh, a lot of studies. I wish I could go to the economics database and just get a whole bunch of data and, and analyze it, but uh, uh, it takes a while to do that. So we, we had a lot of <laughs> um, we, we compared that to uh, a conventional sort of uh, dairy beef mentality to one what I call, I'll call it organic, which was organic steers and we actually supplemented those. So can we utilize uh, organic products, uh, organic corn uh, to raise those animals? Or do we go 100% grass, which was sort of, uh, and is still a, a growing trend in, in that production realm to have 100% grass and, and that sort of market. During grazing season only. During grazing season only, yes. But we fed them uh, hay, uh, haylage uh, during the winter time. So they, they got no grain, no starch, no corn ever in their life. They didn't they didn't touch it at all. So if, when you when you think of the economics uh, impact of that, you also have to take into account sort of harvest dates um, and and where to do that. Uh, our conventional animals. Uh, that we, you know, we, we treated them like a conventional animal. We gave them hormones. We gave them implants. Everything that uh, a conventional producer does to their, to their beef animals, um, and they went to uh, Tyson Foods. Um, 
in July and it takes a little bit longer to get those animals what I deemed market weight. Uh, my colleagues certainly didn't think that that was market weight, but um, organic uh, meat uh, maybe takes a little bit longer to, to produce. Actuality, um, organic beef, uh, most of the organic beef that is produced in the United States goes into hamburger. That is probably the number one uh, sort of product uh, in the organic beef world is, is hamburger. So really we, we raise these steers not for nice steaks but for hamburger. Um, because really consumers aren't really quite willing to pay uh, 28 to 40 dollars a pound for a steak quite yet. So just a few pictures. So this is our this is what a, a conventional our conventional dairy animal looks like. Uh, you know they, they get a lot of muscle and a lot of fat um, and and when you raise them on a strictly corn diet and implant them, that's what happens. When you raise them out on pasture a little bit more, you see a little bit more refined animal, not quite as um, uh, uh, fleshy as, as much meat, and sort of a, a grass-fed animal that has a little bit less, uh, a little bit less meat, and is a little bit smaller type animal that uh, that you get. I talked a little bit about the results from the production end here. Um, sort of relays into the, the consumer aspect of that. So it, on average, it's going to take about 120 days longer uh, to get those animals to a sort of suitable market age uh, to, to collect their beef uh, for, for consumer stuff. Um, you can see gains. I can, we can, in the conventional world, we get uh, quite good gains. Uh, well, that, that's uh, uh, average gains for conventional beef because in the conventional world, you want to get that animal to a market weight as fast as you can. So you you push a lot of uh, stuff to it, and and an animal does that when you when you give it a lot of products. But when you put them on grass, uh, they grow about half as uh, half as fast. <coughs> so you can see what sort of uh, happens when they uh, from growth till all the way of age. Uh, you uh, in a conventional animal you implant them and they just uh, keep continually growing as fast as they can. Some animals will grow at seven to eight pounds a day. They'll put that much meat on quite quickly. Uh, the other ones are 100% organic uh, grass-fed. Uh, they just they just kind of hang out. They go slow, uh, but they do they do grow. The other ones grow fast. This is a winter period, so when you put them on wintertime feed, uh, things go up that, you know, here in the upper Midwest, we have winter, so we have to feed everything inside, uh, so it makes it a challenge as well. But then when you put them back out on pasture, they sort of slow down again, uh, even when you're supplementing them. Um, so that's uh, some things that, that have to be considered. Uh, sort of what it looks like. So this is our, it, our conventional and our organic animals. Uh, you can see a lot more fat uh, on those. Um, and that's you know, a product of the USDA grading system. Uh, we uh, grade animals according to how much marbling, how much fat they have in the meat, and organic animals, uh, ones that, that aren't, are raised on pasture, tend to get docked according to the USDA standards because they just don't have as much fat. And uh, so it's, it's a problem. According to the USDA, they get, they get docked quite a bit. So you, you, you start talking about, this kind of gets to your question about carcass and dressing percent. So. You get a lot more beef out of out of an animal that you put a lot of hormones into it. I still get fifty percent, so that's fifty usable beef from from an animal based on their live weight. So it's only about ten percent difference. But there's a lot of fat here. You can see this KPH fat. That's that's a sort of measure of internal fat uh, is quite quite higher. Let's see relative. Divide sixty one and divide sixty nine. Right, on a relative basis, right. Probably the big thing is, is ribeye area. So most Americans, we like big ribeye steaks. When you go out to eat, you want a, a nice big ribeye, uh, uh, this 12 inches, and so you're going to get a little bit less. But I sort of argue, do we really need, do, con do consumers <laughs> really want need a 12-inch ribeye? So I know Ryan doesn't want questions now, but in life... <laughs> <laughs> but you don't care. Probably the code, thanks. Like the new dietary guidelines, I would think the organic industry should be able to capture some of the information and somehow you could probably help them with that and 
reestablish standards that might link health, consumer health, and the animal property. Right. I, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, meat quality, so you, so this is from a, a USDA standards, uh, so you have your your choice, um, you have prime steaks, you have choice, you have select, so that's different uh, levels of fat in the meat, and I can get a lot of, uh, you can, you know, in the conventional world, they, they grow a, a lot of choice beef, um, that's what Tyson likes to sell, uh, they sell exports, uh, choice and prime beef, uh, we did have a few animals in that group go prime export to j to the Japanese market, so there is a, a nice good there. But like I said, these grass-fed ones, uh, uh, there's nobody goes choice because they don't have any fat on them. And the USDA grader says no fat, low grade. Um, so what about economics? Quick, uh, those are just my economic calculations. One thing at, at the time that we did this study. There wasn't a, a big difference in conventional and in, or, in the organic beef market. So that probably played a role into why should an organic producer raise their steers when I'm only going to get 15 more cents per pound? It's probably not worth it. From a profitability standpoint, though, um, on a, this is on a, a sort of a group basis. I can gain more profit by raising these steers on a total grass fed market than I can conventionally even. But you, you mentioned that at the time of the study that was the case, uh, has that price premium changed from then to now? Um, it's, the, there's probably a little bit more spread uh, when, than, when than the 15 cents. What year was you This was in uh, I took 2012, hmm. so two years ago. But right now there is a little bit, uh, the, the difference is probably greater but it's not you know, it's, it's maybe twenty five cents. It's not double like in No, it's not or double. Or it's not double like I showed crops. you the milk price. Right. Or other commodity crops. And then the second part was do you get a better premium uh, at Lawrence for, for grass fed versus organic? Or is it is it all going to No, the same? it all goes yeah. the same. All the same. All the same. This one here shows minus numbers, that's because organic corn is too expensive to yeah. eat them. And So it kind of goes to your organic premium. So this is a five minutes. Okay, I'll do it. So this is your premiums. If you look at strictly organic premiums, so if I increase the organic premium to that, that the producer gets, you know, I can make a heck of a lot more money on this grass-fed one. And this is sort of, this bottom one is direct marketing. So if I can direct market it on my farm, I can get a lot more money. Is that organic grass-fed beef or yes. just grass-fed beef? This organic grass fed. Yep. Yep. So, not that I tell people that they should direct market it because I think we need more beef into the market, but uh, they can really make a good profit uh, that way. So, what about? So, this kind of goes to the, the health aspects of it. And I think uh, last night Chuck Benbrook alluded to it uh, uh, slightly uh, in his stuff, but really, if you look at from a health perspective, omega-6 and omega-3 ratios in an animal, I can significantly reduce those in a, in a grass-fed animal compared to even conventional. Um, and this organic one, so when you feed grain, you increase uh, your omega-6 uh, quite significantly compared to that ratio. So this is more of your heart-healthy ratio. Uh, those are not so good. So a lot more unwanted fats in, in conventional beef then when you get to an organic uh, uh, organic grass fed one. And that's not being taken into account when you do those other sides. When you, when you do the economic comparison, this is not taken into account. No, this is after the fact. So this is what a, what, you know, sort of from a consumer <laughs> labeling standpoint uh, could certainly benefit from. So what about, uh, what about consumers now? We looked at a hundred People, they had to they had to like beef uh, to to, uh, <laughs> to get it. We, yeah, no vegetarians were not allowed. Um, so uh, we rated uh, different aspects of it. So this was looking at steaks. Um, I'm going to do this again, uh, but we're going to look at hamburger because hamburger is probably the most uh, popular one. So this was steaks uh, that we looked at. 
overall, uh, obviously, overall, most people tended to like the uh, conventional one. The, the actually the half and half, this organic, uh, with some corn in the diet, was the same as um, uh, the conventional market. People, some people still like the grass-fed beef, but not quite as well as the others, just because of a less, less fatty flavor in the meat. Because I think most consumers are are used to having that fat, and when you take the fat out of the beef, they tend not to like it as much. Although I had a, uh, at the university there was, uh, I had a, a bunch of Brazilians uh, in, in my taste panel uh, that were graduate students, and they thought the grass-fed one was the best, because they are used to having grass-fed beef in Brazil. So they, they tended to like that one better, and the fatty one, they didn't, they didn't like that. So Brad, who cooks the food? I did. And so, do you know how to cook grass-fed beef? So, this is the caveat <laughs> to, to this. I can't get people sick at a university, oh uh, or I will God. lose my job. Oh my so, but basically, on a, on a research standpoint, it all had to be cooked the same. So, this was, so it's a little bit different, because this was, this was probably not... You all cooked that beef, I could have, yes. I could have. So that, that's... Can you hire a chef to do the cooking? I mean, it seems that... I could, yes. Yeah. Yes, I... Into your next grant. That's right. Or, I'm going to do it again, but, so I could do the steaks that way too, but I'm going to do hamburger because that's the most popular. Yeah. But yes, that, that, that is an issue that I know is a problem. We can, we can take time out of your next talk. Uh, that's fine. But, no, I, <laughs> no, just a, just an inside joke. No, I mean, but Brad, you're at one minute. Okay. Um, so, but actually, you know, this was sort of a, a like, liking scale. So, you know, did they like it? So we had about 3% of the people actually liked, liked it very much, liked the grass-fed beef. So even though I burnt it. No, no, I, <laughs> uh, pe people actually liked it. But actually, some people, uh, some students that actually took it thought that it had a fishy flavor to it, to the beef. Because I think in some regards it had a high omega-3, <coughs> high omega-3 an association with a fishy taste. Uh, so, some, so if you get a fishy taste of beef, even though uh, they, they probably don't like that very well. So in the end, um, you know, we can, I can, you know, the conventional market sort of that, that's, that's their own beast. Um, they can, they continue to do what they want, uh, but I think there's some um, opportunities for, for organic and sort of that grass fed market. And I think that we should really stop selling our organic animals into the conventional market um, because, um, we're, now we're thinking about importing beef from Australia and other in other places because we don't have enough in the U.S. and uh, I think we can provide that uh, certainly in the U.S. Uh, as well. So, thank you.